Now let's talk about how to solve a linear programming problem. This week we are going to do a simple approach to solve a linear programming problem using a graphical method. Let's do a quick review on how to draw an inequality. Suppose you have this inequality, 2x1 plus 3x2 less than or equal to 6. First, we assume it is an equality. So you assume that the sign here becomes equal. And then you plug in x1 equals 0 to this equality. You obtain x2 equals 2. You plug in x2 equals 0, you obtain x1 equals 3, and then you can draw the line that connects those two points. And then to decide which uh, part above the line or below the line that satisfies this inequality, you may try a point, for example, the easy one is 0, 0. So you check this point, whether this point is less than or equals to 6. Yes, it is. So it means that this part is the feasible region that satisfies this inequality. So here is the feasible region of the Giappetto problem that we've seen before. So you can see here the numbers 2, 3, 4. They correspond to the number of the constraints. Now how can we find the optimal solution? graphically. So you have this objective function 3x1 plus 2x2. What you need to do is to draw an isoprofit line. How to do that? First you choose any feasible point in the feasible region. For example, we choose 20.0. And then we compute its z value. So you plug in 20 and 0 to the objective function and then you obtain z equals 60. And then you replace z with this number. So now 60 equals 3x1 plus 2x2. And then you draw this line which looks like that. And then you drag it parallel to that direction because this is the maximization problem. So you drag the line until it touch the uh, sorry the maximum point in the feasible region, which is point G. So G is the optimal solution for the Giappetto problem. Now we need to find out what G exactly is, which means that x1 equals to what and x2 equals to what. So notice that G is in the intersection of constraint 2 and constraint 3. Because it is in the intersection of these two constraints, you can set these two constraints as equalities. Okay, and then you can perform elimination or substitution to find the answer of x1, x2, which is x1 equals 20, x2 equals 60, with z equals 180. You might ask, can you just um, look at the solution based on the figure? I mean, G, you drag this down and say this is 20, this is 60. Well, if the number are integers like this 20 and 60, maybe you can do it. But if it's actually 20.1 and 60.3, I'm not really sure. So the best thing you should do is um, check out what constraints intersects at this point, and then you uh, convert those constraints into equalities, and then perform substitution or elimination to get the exact point. Now, once we found the optimal solution, we may classify the constraint into binding constraint or non-binding constraint. Let's take a look at the binding constraint first. So constraint is binding if the left-hand side and the right-hand side are equal when we plug in the optimal values. So what does this mean? Let's take a look at the Giappetto problem again. So our optimal solution for Giappetto problem is x1 equals 20, x2 equals 60. 
So let's say we want to check constraint 2, if it is binding or not. Constraint 2 says 2x1 plus 2x, sorry, 2x1 plus x2 less than or equals to 100. So you plug in the x1 and x2 from the optimal solution. So we do that 2 times 20 plus 60. It is actually equal 100 which means that constraint 2 is binding because the left-hand side and the right-hand side, they are equal. We call a constraint is non-binding if the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the constraints are unequal when we plug in the optimal values. So this is important you need to plug in the optimal values to check whether a constraint is binding or non-binding. Let's see the Giappetto problem again. Suppose now we want to check constraint 4. Constraint 4 says x1 less than or equals to 40. When we plug in the optimal solution, however, 20 does not equal 40. Therefore, we can say that constraint 4 is a non-binding constraint. So here are the questions to check your understanding. As usual, I will give you the answer after the pause of the video. So is the third constraint binding or not? The answer is constraint 3 is a binding constraint because when you plug in the optimal solution, the left-hand side equals to the right-hand side. Therefore, constraint 3 is a binding constraint. Second question. Point zero zero is a feasible solution for the Giappetto problem. So constraint 1 is actually non-binding because 2 times 0 plus 0 does not equal to 100. Is it true or false? The answer to this question is false. Zero, 0 is indeed a feasible solution. However, remember that when you want to check if a constraint is binding or non-binding, you must use the optimal solution. So you cannot just plug in any feasible point and say um, the left-hand side and right-hand side equal or not. You must use the optimal solution to do that.